Hong Kong Zhou, as I mentioned, my first PhD student finishing up this summer. And here he's going to show us work on, we can see your screen, thank you, on automatic semi verigram modeling by convolutional neural nets. Hong Kong, take it away, please. Hi, everyone. My name is Hong Ben Zhou, and it's my honor to have this opportunity to share one of our recent, uh, recent research research. Uh, today, I will be talking about automatic variable modeling with a convolution neural net. And in this project, Dr. Perch and I have been participating. And here's the executive summary. Uh, in general, modeling variable remains highly subjective due to the sparsity data, measurement noise, or ambiguity in the experimental variable. So we propose a data-driven automated variable modeling method with a convolution neural net, which we named ASMC to improve the utilization of the spatial information. The ASMC is demonstrated in three subsurface models, resulting in 96% of accuracy and high computational efficiency. With the optimal design of the convolution neural net, we can expand its application to a wide range of the special modeling projects, including the geothermal, solar, or wind energy, as well as environmental remediation, as long as they need a, this spatial continuity assessment. So here are the agenda for today's presentation. <clears throat> in the introduction, uh, we will review how to calculate the barogram and the, what are the ambiguity in the experiment the barogram, as well as previous automated modeling methods. In the methodology part, we will briefly review the artificial neural net and the convolution neural network, which will be used in our proposed method. And in result, we will show you the two demonstration results of 2D special model. One is the synthetic data, and the other one is that the real data from the North Covent field in West Texas. In the end, we will summarize our discussion. So what is the barogram? Here, we are looking at the study special data, uh, which is for porosity. And from there, we want to compute their continuity model. So what are the correlation over the length? That's our question. So to do so, uh, in a conventional geostatistics, uh, they use the barogram, which are defined by this following formulation. In, the, in this formulation, uh, this H indicated over uh, distance over two data points, and the Z is the uh, in a variable of our interest. And there is ZU and ZU plus H are the two data points which are having the, the distance of H. Of course, there are more than one data point over the H distance. We need to find the R them R and then get the mean uh, by, by, in, by in this way. So to get the pair of the data, how we need to define the search template, which consists of the leg interval, or interval tolerance, or azimuth, or azimuth tolerance, and so thus. So, and once we define the, this search template, we can compute the experiment variogram, which we are shown as the black X dot. And from the given experiment variogram, we need to compute this continuous variogram model, which are fit to which are best to fit to the given experimental variable. And from here, we can get a one variable model, and, and then we, we can use this one for any further analysis or the treatment. Um, however, even though we often expect to have a one unique experimental variable, but this experimental variable are not determinant and can vary depending on the different search templates. Uh, here are some examples. Uh, even though we, we, cal we calculate the experimental variogram from the same data set, based on different search template, they end up with a three different variogram models. And we don't know which one is more correct than the other one. Of course, if you have uh, a years of experience in the geostatistics, then you may know the, what are the rule of thumb and what are the, the, the general uh, rule for getting the more realistic uh, variogram model but that may not be readily available for every cases. So that's why uh, it's, it's also important to make this process automatically and remove this uh, ambiguity and subjectivity issue. And here are some previous automated variable modeling approach. There are two main methods. First one is the least square and the next one is maximum likelihood. Uh, least square uh, minimize the misfit between the experimental variable and the variable model by using uh, by using the optimization, optimi optimization scheme. So it's really straightforward and can be coupled with any, any type of the optimization, optimization algorithm. But however, it may have convergence issue and also 
experiment the better graph is still predicted. So we need to get the experiment the better graph. That's how we run the list, list square. But as long as the uh, this experiment the better graph are not unique, this list square may have may not have the clear answer for that. And unlike the list square, maximum likelihood estimate the better graph parameter by minimizing the negative local likelihood function. So it has uh, it has not many intermediate steps. Uh, such as in, uh, selecting the initial value or the iter iteration iteration of the process, and also it can give us the uncertainty of the semi variable parameters. However, it is really susceptible to multivariate Gaussian distribution or non-stationarity or nugget effect. So these are the uh, limitation from the mas mas maximum likelihood method. So objective of our research is to develop a data-driven automated variable modeling workflow to assist uh, to overcome the subjectivity issue in the variable modeling and overcoming the limitation of the previous method. Uh, here, we are now looking at the schematic diagram of the uh, neural net. Uh, neural net is one of the most common type of the machine learning algorithm. And the, on the left-hand side, uh, it, it has the schematic diagram, which is inspired by the neural system of the animal. It is non-parametric prediction model, which means we can expand each application to any kind of most of the any kind of data, and it's really it's highly flexible, and and it it has the input layer, and output layer, and on top of the input and output, it also have the multiple uh, hidden layers. In this example, we only have one, but it can have more than one. And then its connection between the nodes have the their weight. And then the node in, in the current uh, in the the next layer is completed by the weighted sum from the current current nodes in the current layer. For example, to compute this one, we need to multiply each one's value by their weight, and that's how we get this value. And we go we do the same thing for the rest of the nodes. Uh, by using the different activate function, we can import the non linearity. And sigmoid, lelu, or hypertangent are one of the famous, uh, famous and popular activate function. And as a rule of thumb, the more hidden layer and nodes we have, the better we can compute the, the better we can compute the more complicated features. However, the cost is the more training data we may need. However, when we think about how we understand an image, not a number, we don't really use every information to understand that image. For example, uh, in the given figure to assess the continuity of this area, we don't even have to look at entire image to tell that. We can just focus on this area and then tell something about it. So that's how the convolution neural net is proposed to improve the neural net's capability in capturing the geometric features of the image data. And this was first proposed by Lukun in 1989. And the, uh, uh, instead of using the connection, the corner filters are transferring transferring the information between the layers. And also, instead of the using the hidden hidden layer in the convolution neural net, they use the word feature map, but they are in the same concept. And in the convolution neural net, we they have three main operations, which are convolution, upsampling, and pooling. So this is the first operation of the convolution neural net. Uh, Convolution maps the current feature map to the next feature map through the corner filter. And in this example, we have a corner filter of two by two size. And each grid has the, their corresponding weight. And then the next feature map's value are computed by the weighted sum between the current feature map and the next feature map. For example, when we get when we compute this F2 value, we need we, are, we need to use this equation, which are multi multiplication between the C2 and W1, C3 and W2, and so thus, and with uh, some sort of the bias bias. And also by moving this corner filter from the upper top to the lower bottom we can navigate this corner filter and then fill out the other values in the next feature map. And in this way, we can, depending on what are the fit, fit, corner filters are, we can extract the different information from the current feature map to the next feature map. And two other main operations in the convolution neural net are upsampling and max uh, pooling. So they are there for the rescaling the dimension of the feature map. Upscaling expand the feature map by two as shown in the left figure. 
and then pulling shrink their size by half. And depending on how we merge them, they are going to work to a different method. And here we are going to use the maximum pulling, which are uh, selecting the maximum value out of the subset. And with the given concept of the neural net, the convolution neural net, we propose the automated variable modeling with a convolution neural net, which is ASMC. First, we have a tabular data format, and then we plot them into 2D. And from there, we generate the multiple subsurface model, which are labeled with a different uh, variable variable model parameters. In here, we are looking to the major direction, the azimuth of the major direction, uh, major range and the major direction azimuth and aspect ratio between the major range and the minor range. And from there, uh, we need, uh, we generate two different convolution neural net, which we named the convolution neural net number one and number one, number two. The convolution neural net number one maps the special data to the subsurface model and the, co the convolution neural net two maps the subsurface, sub that subsurface model to the variable model parameters. And in the end, after we train and validation, uh, we input our original data set to get the, this variable model parameters. And here are some internal structure of each neural net. And we generate 1,000 training data in this process. Out of 1,800 models are used for training process, and the last 200 will be used for the validation. And in the end, we will get all the, the, uh, the major range aspect ratio and azimuth of the training data and the validation data. So here are some results. Uh, we, first, we apply this method to the 2D synthetic case. Uh, we have porosity, which follows Gaussian distribution without uh, any significant outlier. And from there, uh, we generate the multiple different set of the uh, multiple different set of the variable parameter to make the training data set. And here we have uh, we have uh, it's a design of the experimental design of the experiment for the variable model parameters. Uh, we assume a uniform distribution for each parameter, and with a given range, uh, we run the Monte Carlo sampling for a thousand times to get the multiple variable model parameter set. However, we found an issue in labeling azimuths for training data. For example, zero degree and the 90 de 180 degree azimuths are directing the same direction, but by comparing the zero and 180, they are they are maximum dissimilarity. So instead of labeling the azimuth from 0 to 180, we changed it from, the, from 0 to 90 degree. And instead of using this, uh, and also we expand the, we expand the range of expect, expect ratio from the one third to three. For example, the aspect ratio is above one, then the azimuth direct the major direction. However, if the aspect ratio is lower than one, then azimuth direct the minor direction. So major direction should be labeled uh, the given azimuth plus 90 degree. And here are the training curves for the two convolution neural net in the 2D data set. And we, we don't see any uh, overfitting issues. And here are some, uh, here are three, uh, this, this figure shows the demonstration of the ASMC for three validation data. Uh, first column are uh, subsurface model, and the, the second columns are the, their corresponding barogram, and the third columns are their synthetic data, which are the grounded truths. From there, we, map, we use the convolution neural net number one to get the subsurface model, and the convolution neural net two to get the variable model parameters. As you can see, they are very fit to the, the, the ground truth, which means our trained ASMC performed very well. And here are the truth first estimate plots for the three variable model parameters. And overall, they are give us the 96% of accuracy. And after we train this ASMC, we fit them to our original samples, and this is the result. Uh, so this is the estimated subsurface model from this given original data set, and these are two variable models in the major direction and minor direction. And, and there, uh, so after, after we get this, we, as a validation, we also complete the experimental variable, and they are very fit to any uh, their experimental variable. So we apply the same concept to this uh, real data from the North Korean field, and they also very fit to the, the given uh, grounded truth. So this, this indicates that our ASMC worked very well for 2D data, data sets. And here are some computational time summaries. So overall, it takes about 20 minutes uh, in, in my local computer, which is, uh, and also most of computational time is taken by the generating the training data. So if we can shorten the time in the generating training data, then we can make it more feasible. 
And here are the key points. Uh, machine learning based ASMC successfully estimate the bare ground model parameters of 2D separate spatial data. And it required the minimum prerequisites. So uh, it, it has no ambiguity or subjectivity issue. Also, the entire workflow can be complete within the manageable computational time. And also their flexibility allow us to expand it to application to any different type of the features. Thank you for listening. And this is our IP here today. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Hong Gong, thank you very much for the presentation. Let me just let me just emphasize one point. Even it doesn't matter if you're using multiple point statistics to do your subsurface models. If you're using deep learning GANs to do your subsurface models, you still care about the Veragram. The Veragram is still being used all the time for the continuous property simulation in our workflows, but also the Veragram can be used for all kinds of estimation problems, spatial bootstrap for uncertainty. The Veragram is still a very powerful tool. All right, any questions or comments about Hong Kong's work on machine learning based automatic Veragram modeling? All right. Okay, we'll move on to our next speaker. Thank you very much, Hong Kong. Appreciate it.